yesterday afternoon, it was around this time that Roger Federer announced his retirement. Uh, he put out a video message uh, that came through his uh, social media accounts. To my tennis family and beyond. Of all the gifts that tennis has given me over the years, the greatest, without a doubt, has been the people I've met along the way. My friends, my competitors, and most of all, the fans who give the sport its life. Today, I want to share some news with all of you. As many of you know, the past three years have presented me with challenges in the form of injuries and surgeries. I've worked hard to return to full competitive form, but I also know my body's capacities and limits and its message to me lately has been clear. I am 41 years old. I've played more than 1,500 matches over 24 years. Tennis has treated me more generously than I ever would have dreamt and now I must recognize when it is time to end my competitive career. So that was the announcement, at least uh, part of it went for about four minutes of Roger Federer announcing his retirement from competitive tennis. To get more details on uh, his career is Paul Epsi, the Director of Tennis from the Habsa Tennis Academy. Paul, thank you very much for joining us on TSB once again. Uh, thanks for having me again, although it's a bit, bit, bit sombre this time, I'm afraid. Has this been a long time coming? Do you think it was maybe postponed, this announcement, after the passing of, of Queen Elizabeth II? Uh, no, no, I don't think that's that's really anything to do with it. I think that, I think we all kind of knew that something fishy was going on when he announced that he was going to play in the Labour Cup. Mm -hmm. And, and yeah, I mean, he's, he's, like you said, he's 41 years old and to, to try and come back from such serious injury, I mean, it was, it was almost never going to happen. And unfortunately we've all been proven right. I mean, you know, we, we were talking uh, during the French Open, uh, Paul, and uh, our eyes probably were on Rafa calling it a day, uh, but uh, Fed coming in and overtaking him here as well. I think that, uh, I mean, you've got to remember that, that even though they've been rivals for so long, you know, Federer had a good sort of four or five years before Rafa really came onto the scene. Right. So, I mean, Ra Rafa... Uh, depending on his feet, and obviously, you know, we, we've, we've spoken at length during the French Open regarding that. Right. Uh, but depending on his feet, you know, I, it's only a matter of time before Rafa calls it a day, sadly. Yeah, when you, when you look back at uh, the career of Roger Federer, I remember getting up or well, staying up late to watch uh, then one of my favourite players, Mark Philippoussis, uh, unable to uh, win a Grand Slam, losing to this young up and coming Swiss player, Roger Federer. What are your summer? What are your summer? Your highlights and your favourite memories over this incredible career? I mean, when it comes to Roger Federer, there are so many. I mean, I've I've been lucky. Over the last sort of ten years, I've I've had a lot to do with the Dubai Duty Free Tennis Championships, so I've had a lot a lot of time spent with him there. Um, I was able to make a video with him uh, in 2011 when we we did a video for the Australian Open, where I, I had the privilege of hitting with him. Uh, from a professional standpoint, one of the one of the greatest matches I've ever well, sorry, one of the greatest performances I've ever seen was in the Australian Open. You may remember it. I think it was 2005 against Roddick, where it was a, it was four all in the first set. And then 11 games later, it was almost over and Roddick, Roddick had hardly won a point. So I think, I think other than that, I, I would say surely everybody remembers the 2008 Wimbledon, where, which he lost. And then the 2000, I want to say 2017, uh, Australian Open final against Nadal again, which he won. Yeah, I mean, it's an incredible career. Even former world number one Leighton Hewitt came out to say that there was a period there during uh, the late 90s where he was as close to unbeatable uh, as you could possibly be. Would you agree with that? Um, I mean, it wasn't the late 90s. He, he, was, he was very young then. No, sorry, <laughs> um, sorry, looked, sorry. The late, the late noughties, yes. Yeah, the late noughties. I mean... People people kind of forget because of the rivalry that he he eventually ended up having with Nadal and then Djokovic and kind of just the way that all of their careers moved forward. People forget that during I think it was two thousand and three, two thousand and four, two thousand and five, two thousand and six. Even Federer was pretty much unbeatable. I mean he 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 dominated the sport for such a long period. Uh, I think he won three or four slams except for the uh, the French, French Open, Open just the uh, ones, in, yeah. in three of uh, was it the three times three peat they called it or something so yeah he, he dominated for such a such a I don't know a, a, such a long period and I, and I think that it, it doesn't I, it's a it's a difficult one because I don't want to get all sort of I don't know over 
over emotional, dare I say it, but Federer just he took the game to a level which no one else thought was possible. You've got to remember we came off the back of Sampras and Sampras and Agassi in particular. And Sampras broke the record. He got the 14 slams, beating to Emerson. And then this guy comes along and gets 20. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. No, I mean, obviously, yes, uh, you know, uh, we've grown up watching him uh, becoming uh, the champion of hearts from world over. You know, messages have come in uh, talking about how amazing as a human being Federer has been. You know, uh, when you get up the top, sometimes it just gets into your head, but not with Fed. I think that uh, one of the things that endears him to so many people, if, uh, if you've had an opportunity to, to watch his, when he first starts winning slams, so when he first won Wimbledon, he was in tears. When he first won the Australian Open, he was in tears. Um, you know, when he won the French Open eventually in 2009, he was in tears. I think that that kind of endears him as a, as a human because we, we, we see the, the coolness on court, that kind of, that steely exterior that he shows on court. Obviously, he's so graceful. But then you can see another side to him, which is like he, he loves it. It means absolutely everything to him. And I remember an interview with, with him, I think it was about five years ago, when they kept on talking about retirement, retirement, retire retirement. And he just said, Look, I love the sport. Why would I retire if I love it still? And Andy Murray's exactly the same. Andy, Andy Murray, you know, it, it, the guy's Robocop. I mean, he's, he's half, half man, half machine. He's a $6 million man. And he's still playing, even though he's in a lot of pain. Why? Because at the end of the day, these four, I'm going to use all four, they just love the sport. Yeah, the passion certainly rides through. You mentioned early on, Paul, uh, that you managed to uh, hit a few balls uh, with Roger Federer on the opposite side of the net. What is it like when, when you're seeing there? Are you playing the ball or are you playing the man when he's in the other end of the court? <laughs> um, I can tell you the first five minutes, I my right arm has never felt as heavy as it did that day. Um, I hardly hit a ball in court for the first five minutes because... I don't know. He just, you, you're playing against your your, your, your legend. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, he he was literally everything to me at that, at that time as well. And certainly, I think I've been in the UAE for three years at that time. Mm -hmm. At no point in my professional career did I ever think I was going to even meet Roger Federer. But uh, you know, I'd met him. Uh, I I then was asked to be hit with him at this time, and uh, and yeah, it was. It was the greatest experience of my life. Unfortunately, my wife won't be able to hear what I've just said. Because <laughs> I've, said, I've, said I, I've said on many occasions to friends it was the greatest day of my life, uh, but obviously it's the second greatest after my, my marriage. <laughs> How long did you play for? We actually, uh, we actually played kind of off and on for around about four hours. Wow. wow. We were making a video for the Australian Open. It, 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 when, when he started designing his shoes, um it's actually on youtube you can check it out on youtube and uh and yeah it was uh it was at al casa in uh 2000. i can even tell you the date december 7th 2011. Oh, paul, he, 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 here we go because if i put it into youtube it actually comes up uh the greatest day in paul espy's life so that's the fact. Uh, <laughs> paul i want to ask you w w when did you get married uh, i got married married in 2014 december 30th you're safe now, Paul. You're safe. As long as you remember that date, I think you're, you're okay to remember the date where you played with Federer. Well, I mean, I, 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 can, I can tell you that my, my wife and I, I mean, again, it, I think it is quite appropriate, but my wife and I, we, we were only dating when I, when I had the opportunity to play with Federer. And I actually came home after being asked, and I just burst into tears. Oh, wow. Wow. And I was, you know, at the time, what, what am I now? So I'm, I'm 48. I would have been 38 years old. And, uh, yeah, I just, I just exploded into tears. And I was like, I, I'm, I'm going to be playing with, with, well, I think I said I'm going to be playing with God. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, it was, uh, it was just a, an unbelievable experience. And I think that, you know, again, the, you mentioned about how good he is and how great he is off, off the court. Um, I can tell you that day, as you can imagine, I was very, very, very uh, nervous. And I approached him, shook his hand, and I was like, "Hi, I'm Paul." And he just goes, "Hi, Roger." And I just joked, and I and I and I went, "I think I know who you are." <laughs> and he said, he, he, he said, "Yeah, but if I didn't say that, you'd think I was. Uh, you'd think I was a bit, a bit of an. Uh, well, I can't use the word." Yeah, you, yeah, I understand. But 
Yeah, but I just thought, wow, you know, you're probably one of the most well-known people on the planet and you still have that kind of that humility, that, that sort of decency to just be a normal bloke. And he, he was a very special guy. Um, he had, we had lunch together. He was nothing but amazing. Something that I, w- I was shocked with, even in the times that we weren't hitting, he was still hitting against the wall. He was just hit, hit, constantly hitting, hitting, hitting against the wall. And, uh, yeah, he, he's, uh, he's going to be very much missed. Oh, well. This is an extraordinary story. I, I, I'm intrigued about if that was your reaction playing with him. Uh, what was your reaction when you got the phone call that you've been selected to help film this corporate video? If you if you if you knew how it happened, it was quite. It, it wasn't a phone call. Uh, I got. I, I used to. I used to have a car that was branded, mm-hmm. <laughs> um, and I was in Mall of the Emirates, and a gentleman was standing by my car, and uh, he just said to me, he was like. I guess you're a tennis coach. I'm like, yeah. And he's like, I've got an opportunity to uh, play with Roger Federer. I'm making a video with him in three weeks' time. Would you like to play? And I was like, what? Oh my god! <laughs> so, you, you wouldn't have. I wouldn't yeah. have believed him. I didn't believe it at first. I didn't. I. I. I like I said, uh, it was. Uh, it was only really. I think it was around about sort of two or three hours later when he when I actually got a call to confirm that yes, it's going to happen that I just, like I said, I broke down in tears and, and I, I was like, I don't believe I'm going to get to do this. This is phenomenal. This is, I mean, uh, you know, I, I, can, I can only imagine this. Uh, you know, I've, I've, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a cricket coach, so I've worked around with the, you know, with, with a few sides. And, uh, you know, just being around your heroes is just phenomenal. I know when, uh, you know, right now during the Asia Cup, there were the Indian and Pakistan side, the Afghanistan side that were training here. We got a bunch of young kids to come in and bowl to them at at the nets, right? As net bowlers, mm-hmm. the the you know it 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 was it was probably one of the best days of their lives to be in in the same zone as their heroes and to bowl to them. I'm I'm sure that you know uh, the the feeling is absolutely overwhelming. I mean, to control your emotion and to deliver, then it's a bigger challenge. Absolutely, and and something which I mean, it, I think it's relevant, but but it's a it's a deeper story. Is that when I was fifteen, um, I'm I'm hoping that you that you would remember a, t- a French tennis player called Yannick Noah. Yeah, of course. Yep. Uh, he was the last uh, French guy to win a win a slam, and uh, I had the privilege to play with him in a in a in a small. Um, it was an exhibition thing in Liverpool, where I'm from, and uh, it just so happened that. I, I collect tennis rackets for, uh, as, as one of my hobbies, oh, okay. and I got the racket that he was using that day, and uh, and I, I posted it on Instagram, mm-hmm. and I, I tagged him, and I and I said and I said, you know, Yannick, no, I don't hope you realise just how inspired you made things. You know, I've made a career, I've I've dedicated my entire life, and I can tell you now that having the opportunity to play with you, then bloody blah, blah blah, and he messaged me, and I've actually been involved in in talks with him uh, for four or five days now because based on that. And that's something which I feel that Federer also embraced really, really well. If you, if you remember, there was a, I think he was an Indian boy, actually. There was an Indian boy who interviewed him about five years ago, six years ago, no, and was... they got to play with each other. Yeah, I don't Iz- know if Ahmed. yeah Iziana Ahmed. I, I remember that kid. He, 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 right, and, yeah. then, and then there was another one during, there was a girl during lockdown or something that he, he went to, they did a they did a pasta advert or something together, yeah. and things like that. I think that when you look at Sampras and Agassi mm-hmm. as the, the people beforehand, they never really embraced the 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 people as much as the likes of Federer and Nadal and Djokovic have. True. And I think that that's something which you know separates them and makes them. I mean, I've I've said for many many years that you know, I, although personally I will always call Federer the goat. Mm-hmm. I'm not. I'm not stupid enough to think. Well, you know, Nadal is not a goat, and Djokovic is not a goat. We've just been blessed with the three greatest players that have ever walked the planet at the same era. So I think the best thing to do is just call them all goats. And <laughs> you throw in, you throw Serena in there as well, and you've got you've got the four greatest people, the greatest tennis players that have ever walked the planet. And I don't think we in our, our generation we will ever see anything like it again. Yeah, an exceptional an exceptional situation we've been fortunate enough to witness. Uh, Paul, thank you very much for joining us and uh, sharing that exceptional story about what is your great, second greatest day of your life. 
My, yeah, the second greatest. Thank you very yeah, much. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there is Paul Espy, the director of tennis for the Harp Tour Tennis Academy. The best place if you're looking to go down and have some lessons is the Harp Tour Tennis Academy. So if you do have some uh, memories of Roger Federer, you can always let us know. Zero five eight six eight six one.